Hello. In this lesson, we're going to talk about cosine, its graph and domain and range. The, the way we talk about it and the order we cover it is very similar to what we did with sine. And uh, you know, the centerpiece for this to happen is for all of these discoveries of you know, the graph, sine, cos you know, of, for cosine is going to be based on definition. So I still put the definition right here, right? So let us repeat together. A function is a rule, okay? So we're gonna talk about the rule for cosine, okay? So cosine is just a rule of a function that assigns to each input angle A, okay? Input can be anything. You can use any symbol to represent it. It's just a placeholder. In domain, exactly one output in range, and we call it f of a. Okay, so domain. We from domain we get all the input. So for each input, after the rule, after the application of the rule to the input, we produces exactly one output, and each output is in the range. So the range is the collection of all possible output. Now, once again, the three pillars of trigonometry, the rule of trig functions are established based on these three pillars. Okay, the first one, of course, the angle measurement. All the angles are measured from that standard position, which is the positive direction of x axis. The standard position is the positive directions of x axis, okay? All the inputs to the six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, secant, all the inputs to these six functions are measured from the same position, from the same position, right? Consistent from beginning to end, from trigonometry to other courses forever. Angle measurement, Okay, it doesn't matter your angle is, you know, measured by radian, degree, uh, or arc length, right? If you go, if you do the measure counterclockwise, and you, you get a positive angle. If it's clockwise, you get a negative angle. Reference angle, Reference angle is the positive acute angle between the terminal and the x axis. Mm -hmm. So this the second pillar, first pillar, second pillar, third definition. The definition, okay, addresses to the terminal of the angle measure. Any way you measure it, counterclockwise, clockwise, and you have a terminal. And on that terminal, we pick a point. On that terminal, we pick a point. On the terminal size of A, other than the origin, okay? This condition, other than the origin, because we don't choose origin, okay? At origin, X is zero, Y is zero. So if we pick point other than the origin, one of X or Y is not zero. Therefore, it guarantees the R is going to be positive always, all right? Now, input is angle, output is ratio. And what kind of ratio? This X divided by this R, okay? R will never be zero, right? Since R will never be zero, therefore this ratio will be meaningful for any angle. So this here, we already spell out that the domain for cosine is all real numbers, all real numbers already, okay? But let's see for ourselves. So we're gonna see the next picture, which we worked out by definition, right? We worked out by definition in the previous sections, in the previous weeks. If you haven't watched them, please do, please do. Okay, so let's look at this unicircle. Let's look at this unicircle. We, we produced all of these points by definition. Okay, 
we produced all these points by definition. So let me see if I can make this font just a little bit larger. Okay. All right. So hopefully those numbers are clear to us. Or you want when you watch it, you can um, you can make it. Um, you know, full screen, full screen. But anyway, so if you look here, right? So now I'm going to talk about the definition one more time to talk about how this is produced. Okay. Number one, angle measurement, right? All the angles are measured from standard position. So this is the standard position. Okay. If the angle measured pi over six, which is 30 degree, okay? We measured counterclockwise. So this is gonna be a positive angle, positive angle, positive pi over six, okay? Positive angle. On this angle, this angle can be measured as 30 degree pi over six or the arc lens. We know the arc lens, okay? We know the arc lens. The arc lens measured counterclockwise. Arc lens measured counterclockwise. The arc lens is pi over six. The angle is pi over six in radian. The angle is 30 degrees, okay? So now we pick a point. We pick a point on the terminal side of the angle. So we pick, we can pick any point on the terminal size. And we have discussed that since it doesn't matter which point we pick on the terminal size of the, of the angle other than the origin, we cannot pick origin, right? We just talk about it. We cannot pick origin. Origin at origin R is zero. So if we don't pick origin, the R will not be zero, R will be positive, right? So the point we pick, because it doesn't matter any point we pick, we pick this point on the unit circle. We have talked about why this point is as such, okay? So now with that pick, okay, with that pick, we actually have a concrete X, the concrete X is the red. The concrete, hold on, let me use the, I'm, I'm gonna use the color coordination, okay? The concrete X is right here. So X is a root three over two. Y is, what is Y? Y is half. Okay, so this is X, this is Y. On the unit circle, on the unit circle means that R is one, R is one, right? So now cosine is gonna be X. What is the X in physical appearance? What is the X in physical appearance? The X in physical appearance is the horizontal measurement from the origin, right here. This is X. Okay, what is Y? Y is the vertical measurement from the origin. Okay, right here. This piece from origin, the same Y. Okay, so that's half. So this red is root three over two, the blue is one half. Does everybody follow? Okay. Now, we can make up the cosine ratio. We can make the cosine ratio. So as we said, right, cosine ratio, in the case R equals to one, on unit circle, R equals to one, right? When R equals to one, hold on. Just make some space here. Okay, when R equals to one, okay, so on unit circle, unit circle, 
when r equals to one, this denominator becomes one. And so therefore this is x. So that is x, okay? So this red number, okay, is x, is the output for cosine. Therefore, for pi over six, for that input pi over six, okay, for that input pi over six, the output of cosine, when cosine rule apply to it. So how do we write it down? This is how we write it down. For the input pi over six, okay, and we apply the rule of cosine and it is going to be equals to the x coordinate of this point on the terminal divided by r. In this case, our r is one. Therefore, the answer is root three over two. Okay, so this is the whole process that we, the narrative that we use definition. We use definition. We emphasize this, these definitions over and over again because that's the only center in this in trigonometry. That's only center in trigonometry. Is there another center? No, none. Okay, ARD is only center. Okay, you just have to focus on that definition to understand every single word of it, every single word of it. All right, without further ado, let's, let's, move, let's move forward, right? Because our goal is here is to graph cosine curve, okay? Even though we can get our cosine values from this unit circle, right? Now we understand for each different terminals on the special angles, then we can just pick the blue, we just pick the red number. How, then you say, how about for non-special, right? How about for non-special ter terminals? That's not a problem, right? That's not a problem. We can find that out. Right? For example, if I have a non terminal, a non special terminal right here, right? Non special terminal. For this point, for this point, right? We just measure that from standard position, right? And this angle is not special, it's not special, right? So we don't need, it's true, we don't know those red numbers. We don't know those red numbers. But we can still find a point on the terminal and we can also find the point on the unit circle, okay? We can also find that point on the unit circle, okay? And once we find that point, okay? So let's give a name to that point. The name is star, okay? This point will have a coordinate. Okay, so I'm gonna mark that coordinate. That coordinate is going to be X. Uh, let me do this. X comma Y. Okay, so here I'm going to make sure I do the color toned. Okay, X, there's a physical appearance of that X, right? And what is that X? I'm gonna use, oops, please give me red, right? So that, oops, geez. Okay, so let me do it again. All right, so that point has a coordinate. Okay, so what is that coordinate? Okay, parentheses. All right, so let me do it slowly, okay? So, open parentheses, comma, close parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna do some color coordination. So X, G, okay, let me do X, okay? X, okay? And then there's a Y. So X is in the family of the red, even though we don't know. And Y is in the family of the blues. Okay, we know the family of blues and those are for, you know, for sign. Those are the output for sign, okay? 
And next, let's see what is the physical pres presence of these axes. Okay, so X is a horizontal measurement from the origin, consistent with what we did with this special angle. Okay, it must. And this is a blue. This is blue. And what will be the output for cosine? It's X because the definition tells us so. The definition tells us so. So the input is this angle, which is A. This is the angle. Okay, you, you if you're given the, the value of this angle, then degree, whether it's, if it's a degree, you can convert it to radian. If it's radian, you can convert it to degree. And you can also find out the arc lens. Okay, once that value is given to you and you convert it to radian and you also know the arc lens on the unit circle. Okay, and that arc lens on the unit circle is the same value as the radian of this angle. Okay, we talked about this in the previous weeks. If you go back to watch it, if you didn't get it, you need to watch those videos. You, you need to watch these lectures. I think give yourself at least three times. Okay, if you still don't get 100% on your quizzes, you should watch five times. If you still don't get it, right? 100% on your quizzes, how about watch 10 times? If you watch 10 times, I guarantee you do much better than if you watch uh, once or twice. If 10 times still doesn't make you get it, maybe read the book and come back to watch again. Okay, read the text and come back to watch it again. All right, so you can see the relationship, right? You can see the relationship. Now, if it's not a special angle, if it's not a special angle, you still have the red, you still have the blue. How do we express it? How do we express it? In this case, right? You are going to write cos, cos well, the angle we have is A, right? It's gonna be a value. And we apply the rule of cosine to it. And what is the value? X, right there, right there. If this point is on the unit circle, see, we apply the definition, we're applying the definition. It's just that right now, we don't know what A is, what X is, what Y is, okay? I think in the future, I will give you examples after this episode, okay, after this lesson, okay? Uh, without further ado, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, so we're gonna make cosine curve. So what's the idea behind the making of a cosine curve? Well, it's because, yes, we can find all the sine value, cosine value from the definition, but we want to simplify the relationship. We want to simplify the relationship. So that relationship will only be between, okay, the angle, input and the input and output. So we want to have a graph where input and output are straightforward, okay? The input and output is straightforward. So the, we're gonna talk about how we get that, okay? So now for angle zero, cosine angle zero, Right, how do we measure angle zero? Zero from the standard position to get that zero, we stay there, right? It, the terminal overlaps with the, the, the position we start measuring. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the unit circle and the point is one comma zero. So in this case, okay, in this case, Right? What is X? This is X. X is one. Y is what? Y is zero. Okay, so for this angle, for this angle, right? 
cosine zero, cosine zero is the red number, cosine zero, right? A is zero, the, the input is zero and the output is what? One, by definition, by definition, wait, by definition. Does that make sense? You see, we follow definition closely. And the physical presence, okay, the physical presence. Okay, so let's look at the, let's observe this process, right? Now, we measure this angle and what is that one? One is the horizontal measurement. This is one, okay, this is one. Right, so this red number one has a has a physical presence. That's one. Okay, and what is zero? Well, zero is the radian. So on the graph we are about to make is that when input is zero, which is right here zero, and the red line, we let it stand up because that is going to be the output. So in this graph the horizontal measurement from the origin is the input. The vertical measurement is the output, okay? So this red, which is, has a length of one, is the same as this one. It's a positive one, it's a positive one, okay? And this is a positive one, and therefore it's above X axis. This point, 0 comma 1, meaning cosine 0 equals to 1. Okay, so this point, this point, okay, so this point indicating that relationship when input is 0, output is 1, under the rule of cosine, under the rule of cosine. Is that clear? Okay, make sure you understand that this, this picture we are about to make, okay, is the radian versus what well, input versus output. Input, output, okay? Input is the angle, output is ratio. Okay, so let's look at the second point. Let's look at the second point. Second point, pi over six. Okay, pi over six. I'm gonna leave some space in case I need it, right? In case I need the space. All right. So for cosine, for cosine, we know the rule, right? We are on unit circle, right? So I still maintain this, I still maintain this guy, okay, because I want you to listen in my narrative, I'm quoting definition. I'm quoting definition, okay? So you, when you watch this video, I want you guys to have that flush card if you haven't made it with the definition of trig functions. And right now we are addressing cosine function, okay? So you don't look at all six, you look at the second one, cosine. So now, now our input, okay? Our input, is pi over six, is pi over six, okay? What is the rule I'm gonna follow? The rule I'm gonna follow is a cosine, okay? Cosine, so this is the rule I'm following. What, are, what output does it produce? It produces x over r, okay? How, what is X, what is R, right? It's a set in definition. It's a set in definition, right? X is the horizontal measurement of the point on the terminal. So let's measure, right? So we're gonna start from the, the first pillar of trigonometry, okay? So I'm gonna measure the angle from the standard position. Okay, angle pi over six is measured from standard position. Pi over six, 30 degree. Terminal. Terminal, of course, can be long, 
right? Can be long. And that's the terminal. Of course, it has a reference angle. The reference angle is also pi over six, 30 degree. Okay, definition, definition. Definition says you pick any point on the terminal sides of the angle. This is the terminal sides of the angle, okay? Other than the origin, you can pick any point. You can pick any point, you name it. Any point you wish, okay? And we also talk about in why unit circle section in the previous lesson, why we pick points on the unit circle because, this, because we produces a bunch of similar triangles Whichever point we pick on the terminal size of the, of the angle other than the origin, right? You see, I'm citing definition again. I'm citing definition again. The whole time I'm citing definition, okay? And it doesn't matter which point we choose because the output will be the same. Output will be the same. For that reason, we're gonna pick the point on the unit circle. And we talk about the advantage of having of having that, right? We, so we talk about that. If you so we pick unit, we pick the point on the unit circle. So we therefore we keep that. And in our previous lessons, we talk about how this point has been has come about, right? We um, you know, I just just give you a brief review, okay? And in that study, in that study, we talk about. You know, the red number has a physical presence, okay? The red number has a physical presence. That's root three over two, okay? And the blue number has a physical presence, okay? So that's the red and blue. How did we get those? How did we get those? So let's review that a little bit, okay? So um, I'm going to show you how we get that. Okay, just a review, hopefully this will be quick, okay? Now, since we know this is a 30 degree, right? We know this is 30 degree, right? And uh, this must be 60 degree. So this angle is 60 degree, right? Should we write it down? Okay, so this is 30 degree. or radians is pi over six, and this other one must be 60 degree. Right, the 60 degree. Then what we do next is that we're gonna make a, an auxiliated triangle, okay? So we make this triangle, which is identical with the one, is really the, the triangle above x axis flipped over. So we get this triangle with 30 degree. So this entire triangle, this entire angle is 30 degree plus 30 degree, that's 60 degree. Pi over six plus pi over six is pi over three. Okay, so let me write it down for you. 30 degree plus 30 degree, that's easy for you. Pi over six, Okay, so this is pi over six, and the next angle is also pi over six. Okay, and this point we don't we don't worry about the measurement. We don't use a negative. Okay, because we're just looking at the geometry. We're just looking at geometry. Okay, so pi over six plus what pi over six is pi over three, because you get two pi over six, and that's going to be pi over three. Okay, pi over three. So please write it down by yourself if you need to pause this piece of recording and do that. So this entire angle is pi over three. So this piece is pi over three. 60 degree, pi over three. So we have another 60 degree. So we have a 60 degree, 60 degree, 60 degree. So this is the equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle tells us that the three sides are the same. Okay, so since the green is one and the blue is one, and this piece must be one, this whole piece is one. Okay, so we're gonna pick that, uh, we're going to, and half of it, 
half of it is half. This is half, okay? Because the entire piece is one. The entire piece is one. And there you go, right? And you can use Pythagorean theorem to find this, this other side, right? So that's gonna be one squared minus. So this piece, the red number, right? So the red number, right? The red number, we call it X, right? So X squared plus half squared, right? Which you already got it. We just got it, half squared, that's equals to one squared, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so if you want to confirm that I, yes, I forgot to mention these are right triangles. These are right triangles, okay? So next, you're gonna have X squared. Okay, ideally I, I should write vertically, but because the, because the, the space, right? So it's gonna be one minus a quarter, right? Subtracting one quarter, one, one over two squared is one over four. So this is gonna be over, it's gonna be three quarters, right? And, uh, and we take square root on both sides. We take square root on both sides. I hope you guys don't get bored, okay? So this is three over four. On the left-hand side, it's going to be x squared to take a square root. Okay, so that's x squared taken square root. Okay. And the left hand side is going to give us absolute value of x. Okay, so I'm going to just use absolute value of x here. Okay. And then root three over four, that, that's gonna be root three. That's gonna be root three over two, okay? Because root three over four, right? In that is, go back to watch it if you have a question, okay? Because here I have limited space. And next, absolute value of X equals to root three over two because X is a positive. You see, X is a positive. Okay, my X here is a positive. How do I know? Because it's on the positive sides of X axis, right? So this is our X. So absolute value of X is the same as what? The absolute value of X is the same as X. So that's how we get X equal root three over two, okay? All right, so now we get this point. We got this point. This is the whole nine yards reviewing the previous uh, lessons. Okay, so now we have this red number. What is this red number? This red number is this horizontal uh, is this horizontal measurement from the origin for the terminal. Right? Don't forget that terminal. Oh, what color did I use? That doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the terminal for pi over six. Okay, this is the terminal for pi over six. That terminal pi over six, okay, crosses the unit circle at this point, at this point. And this point has a X, has a Y, right? And this is X, this is Y, X has a physical presence and the Y has, I don't wanna bore you guys because we're kind of repeating, okay? Yes, as a teacher, I should repeat, but uh, not too many times, not too many times. Okay, so I'm also counting on you. Uh, if this is boring for you, you can do a little fast forward. Otherwise, you can, you, you know, if it's just right for you, just be patient with me. Okay, so that's a red, that's a blue. Because we're doing cosine rule, we're doing the cosine rule. So the output is going to be what? The output is going to be x it's going to be x, right? Because it says so. x over r. What happened to r? r is 1. So x divided by 1 is x, right? So x right now is going to be what? It's root 3. Oops. It's root 3 over 2. That's how we get it. That's how, that's how the whole uh, process tells. 
right? And of course, you don't see the textbook use this notation, okay? So how do we write it? How do we write it? Okay, this is how we write it. The input is pi over six, and we apply the rule of cosine. Okay, we apply the rule of cosine. So the rule of cosine applied to the input and that equals to root three over two. That's the standard way of writing. That's a standard way of writing. So that's the whole story. That's a whole story. So how do we get this point on the graph, right? When we get the points on the graph, Remember, our intention is to make input output straightforward. Input, output, right? Input, output. Input, output. That's the output. Input, output. Do you see that? Input, output. Okay. So, what is the input? Right, what is the input? The input, right? How do we draw the input, right? We just mentioned that when we terminal, when we, we have a terminal at, you know, over here, right? We have the terminal. I'm gonna draw that terminal one more time. The reason I have to do this over because this is a two different software, okay? I'm using Zoom soft, the software provided by Zoom right now, but my other software, which is this, this page is by Scientific Notebook. These two softwares don't talk to each other, okay? They're, they're not, they don't talk to each other yet, okay? So this measurement, how, so how do we bring this in, input pi over six root over two? Well, in pi over six, yes, it is this angle, Right? It is this angle measured in radian. It's also 30 degree. We don't use 30 degree, okay? Because the horizontal direction and the vertical direction, they all represent the length, length, the actual size, okay? So what do we do? Knowing that this arc lens, this arc lens, Okay, recall what we did for sine. This arc lens is in orange color. So we take this piece of arc lens and straight, make it straight. We stretch it straight. And we put that arc lens right here, right here. So this piece of, <clears throat> excuse me, this piece of arc, this piece of pi over six is the same as the arc lens over there which is, has the same value as the pi over six measurement of this angle. But we use this length, we use this arc length as the horizontal measurement to be the input for that point. So pi over six, see? Pi over six indicating this golden arc length, okay? Now the output, what is the output? The output red, Okay, which is right here, right here, and this height, and that height is the red, the red physical presence. So this red, that red are the same. And the golden color matched. Okay. So this is going to be the same theme. Then you say, what happened to the blue number? Well, we're, we're, dealing, with, we're dealing with a cosine. We already used the blue number for sine. Okay, go back to watch the sine, the making of sine. Same idea, the same idea. Okay, so let's keep going. When we keep going, we really repeat the same theme. We're repeating the same theme. But so please have your notebook with you are you gonna do it along with me? Okay, you're gonna do it along with me. You know, you guys, when, when, when I use this software to do this, um, it takes a long time to do that. So my lecture, right, you, when you watch it, you really need to put your hearts and mind to watch it attentively for as many times as you need, because this is a, 
a condensation of lots of information putting together. Okay, lots of work inside. So I, I really think my work here presented here is worth your while to watch it at least once. Okay, otherwise you should not take my class. Okay, if you don't think I'm, my lecture is not worthy of watching multiple times, then you should not be taking my class. Take someone else's class if it's more worthy of your, your time. Okay, that's fine with me. That's fine with me. So now, once again, once again, okay, we're gonna do this one more time. Please have your notebook ready and ready to pause and move forward, for, you know, backward as you need it, right? And have the definition of a uh, trig function right next to you, you're gonna see I'm repeating the same thing. I'm gonna repeatedly saying the same thing. I'm still quoting definition. And this time the angle of input is pi over four, okay? So input, output, right? I'm still using you know the, the, the original one, okay? So my input here is pi over four. So once we see that input at pi over four, but according to the three pillars of trigonometry, I know this angle is measured, right? From the standard position, from the standard position counterclockwise. Okay, this is a standard position counterclockwise. So that's my terminal. That terminal can be as long as I wish. But I'm only going to pick point on the unit circle because it doesn't matter which point I pick, right? On the terminal size of the angle, other than the origin. Am I, re am I quoting the definition? Absolutely. Okay, I'm, I'm, quoting my, I'm quoting the definition all day long, all throughout the lecture, all throughout the semester when trigonometry is covered. Okay. So now that green, that's the terminal, that's a terminal, okay? Now, with that terminal, since I decided to choose this point, right? We decided to choose this point. And do, do, I, do we need to review how we get this point? Okay, so let's very briefly, very briefly. Okay, so this point, pretend I don't know this, right? So I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna cover this. Pretend I don't know this, covered. What do I do? Well, I'm gonna draw the triangle. I know this, oops, I just use white and white it out. Okay, so I have a blue, right? So I still consistently, I'm looking for that blue number. Okay, I'm looking for that blue number. Okay, that blue number is here. That's the physical presence of that blue number. And I also have a red. So I'm looking for the red and blue. Pretend I don't know. And this is a right triangle. This is a right triangle. In particular, this angle pi over four is 45 degrees. If this is a right triangle and this is 45 degrees and this guy is 45 degrees. So this is an equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle, okay? No, sorry, I'm using the wrong word. This is isosceles, isosceles, not an equilateral triangle, okay? Equilateral triangle are 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, which is the one we did earlier, sorry about that. So this is a 45 degree, 45 degree. So this is isosceles. Isosceles means what? It means the red and the blue are of the same length, of the same length. So I'm gonna call this red X, right? And there's a blue X. Okay, red and blue are the same value. Especially in this first quadrant, they're not only the same value, they're also have, they not only have the same absolute value, they also have the same sign, right? Positive, positive. Anyway, without further ado, we use Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem 
you know, is x squared plus x squared equals to one. Our hypotenuse is one, okay? Our hypotenuse is equals to one, right? So therefore we can use our, we can use our Pythagorean theorem, okay? So x squared plus x squared is equals to one, okay? And from here, we get two times x squared equals to one, right? Combining like terms. So once again, we divide both sides by two. So we get x squared equals to half, right? From here, we're going to um, take square root on both sides, okay? The square root of x squared we know that's equals to the absolute value of x, right? And what happened to the square root of half? Well, that's gonna be square root of half, right? Square root of half, that's one over two, right? So what is square root of one over two? Well, we can, that's equals to square root of one, over square root of two. Square root of one over square root of two. Square root of one is one. And we rationalize it by multiplying square root of two over square root of two, over square root of two. Anything times one stay the same. So we ended up with what? With root two over two. Okay. That equals to, right? Well, let's summarize. We have this long stuff, right? Each piece is equal, right? So we have x, absolute value of x. Absolute value of x in the first quadrant, x is a positive, right? X is a positive. How do I know x is positive? Because it's on the positive sides of x axis. So therefore the absolute value positive number is the same as the number. So therefore, this x equals to square root two over two. X is the same as blue, therefore, therefore, right? So this point, the red is root two over two and the blue is also square root two over two. There, that's how we get those numbers. Or that's how we get those numbers, okay? So that was a reviewing from previous lessons. If you want to see more details, okay, in the previous lessons, has a very thorough coverage in the lessons. Um, I believe that was last week, okay, week three. Okay, the making of the curve, the making of the curve, okay. So once again, the making of the curve is that we want, okay, so the point on the curve is going to be what? It's gonna be the input pi over four and the output, which is x over r, okay? X over r. Well, because r is equals to one, therefore this is just x on unit circle, on unit circle, right? So our point should look like this. So when you see this point, you know the input is pi over four, the output is a cosine what? It's a cosine pi over four. Whoops, what am I doing? back, okay, oh, there, we're not back yet, there, okay, so cosine pi over four, so the output is a cosine pi over four, okay, so what is a cosine pi over four? What is a cosine pi over four? Input, output, right, input, output. It's the red number, it's a red number. You guys see that? It's a red number we found. What is it? It's a red number, so right here. You see, we want to show that point on the graph. So we don't have to deal with all these, you know, sine, cosine combined. We just want to be, we just want to have a simple relationship reflecting the input and output, period. That's what we do, okay? And now let's see how that point is being reflected. 
Okay, so once again, right, we have a terminal, right? The terminal is right here. We measured counterclockwise. And this angle is 45 degrees and a pi over four in radian. Okay, that pi over four in radian is also the arc length, arc length measured counterclockwise. So it's a positive. So this arc length in golden color has the value of pi over four. So the angle is pi over four in radians. The arc length is pi over four units. The what units depends on how you measure it, depends on you, you, the, the, you know, whatever way you measure it, inch, centimeter, whatever. And this golden piece is taken and make straight and that's the piece lying down here horizontally. Okay, how about the red? How about the red, right? What happened to the red? Well, the red, the red, what is the red? The red number is the output for cosine. So we're gonna take this red number, right? The red number is indicated by this guy. Okay, that's root two over two. So this red number, we pick that red number and we make it stand up. We make it stand up. So input is the arc lens and the output is the red standing up. So that's the second, well, that's the third point we're talking about in on the cosine curve. Okay, on the cosine curve, right? So we had the point for zero and the point for pi over six, right? Now is pi over four. Consistently, the arc lens, red number. Okay, arc lens, the red number. So let's go back to see what we have done. Okay, for zero, input is zero, output is one. So what is that output? That output is right here. The red number one, you see the red number one. Okay, the next one, pi over six, right? Pi over six, the golden color is this piece and the red number is right here. The red number is right here. Okay, that's the red number. Okay, I'm just making adjustments so they look more alike. They are, they are the same value. Okay, so the golden piece and the red. Okay, and next, which we just did, you can see the consistency, don't we? Do we see that consistency? Now, for pi over four, for pi over four, what do we get? For pi over four, the arc lens, in golden color, this piece. So it's lying down here. And what is the red number? The red number is the red number indicated here, root two over two, and we make it stand up. We make it stand up. Okay, so now the relationship is a simpler. We don't have to worry about the blue number because we don't need the blue number when we're making cosine curve, right? And now let's keep going. Well, I think the, the lesson has up to one hour, but anyway, we're gonna just keep going. So uh, the same pattern, we keep going, okay? So we're gonna do the next point. The next point is the same idea, the same idea, okay? So the arc lens is a pi over six, uh, I'm sorry, pi over three. We measure the angle from center position and terminal here. So this angle, okay, this angle terminates 
This is a terminal, pi over three. So this angle is pi over three and this arc lens is pi over three. Let me make it thicker. Okay, pi over three. And this let, let this lie down. And what is the red number? My red number is over here, right there. Okay, and I can draw it there, the same red, you know, the same red, the red is here, the red. Right, and this is special triangle too, right? Because if this is 60 degree and that's a 30 degree, so you can find the lengths of different size. And this will be a special triangle, right? 60 degree, 30 degree, 90 degree. So the red number is half here, okay? The, you know, the previous red number here, right? And the previous red number here and here, okay? So this is the one and this is root three over two and this is the root two over two, that's the half. So now for pi over three, the golden piece is the arc lens and the red piece is this piece of red standing up. There. Okay, the gold piece and the red piece. Okay, all right. And the same idea, okay. In terms of writing, okay, you don't see these things used in any textbook at all. Okay, and this is my invention. Well, in a way that I want to emphasize that flow and also give you a sense of order of operation. And in the future, I think it will be beneficial for you to see that when you do coding, okay? But anyway, so the angle is gonna be pi over three. That's the input. And uh, in our case, we, are, we apply the rule of cosine, right? And the ratio is going to be the red number. So how do we write it down? How do we write it down, right? It's on the unit circle, right? Because we have, we have R equals to one, right? It's on the unit circle. So when we write it down, okay, the actual way we write it down is that we take the input, right? And we apply the cosine rule and the, rate, and the output is half. So this expression represent all of these. Shorthand notation, shorthand notation. And this point, this point, okay, so let me, I have this scoot over a little bit. You see this point on the curve, which is marked as pi over three comma half, it is a reflection, okay? And here's the input and here the output. And right here is the rule, okay? Right here is the rule. Okay, now you see the way of writing it. Okay, you see the way of writing it. So when we write it that way, input, output. Okay, input, output. All right, so let's keep going, okay? Pi over two, pi over two. Pi over two, this is a golden piece and the red number is zero there, okay? Now, continue, continue. We'll get all the other points, okay? We'll get all the other points. The next point, the next point is two pi over three. So what is two pi over three? The gold piece of two pi over three Okay, two pi over three. The angle is measured from the standard position. Okay, two pi over three. So the terminal is right here. Terminal is right there. Okay, so we're taking the arc lens. We're taking the arc lens from here. Okay, all the way measure counterclockwise arc lens. And that arc lens is here. 
that's arc lens. Okay, this arc lens is two pi, oops, too thick. Okay, so that arc lens is two pi over three. Okay, two pi over three. Okay, two pi over three. Two pi over three at the terminal, <clears throat> excuse me, the red number is negative half. Okay, so this piece is negative half. It's reflected on this picture because it's beneath x axis and the red number. Okay, and what is the red number? The red number is right here. That's the red number, horizontal measurement. Okay, or over here, same, same number negative half, negative half reflected on the unit circle and this is negative half, okay? Negative half. So this piece is negative half. Okay, so let me clean it up. Okay, so negative half. Okay, so this point, this point, so I'm going to I'm going to write it down for you. Whole sign. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is equals to negative half. That's the whole process. That's the whole process. So how do we mark this point? How do we mark that point? Right, how do we mark that point? This point, I'm gonna call it a heart, this point. How do I mark that point? That point is marked by the input output. The output is negative half. Okay, the red number. The input is a gold piece, two pi over three. Okay, that's it, that's it, okay. I think we're gonna stop here for this lesson, okay. Um, let me know if you have any questions. We will have a continued session on this one, which, is, which will be posted right next to this video for you to watch to enhance the understanding, okay. So once again, if you look back, what is the centerpiece of the whole lecture? And there's no doubt, there's no doubt, the centerpiece is A, R, D. Angle measurement, reference angle definition. The whole time we're using this centerpiece, okay? So you must have your definition, have that flush card right next to you when you are reading this, okay? The entire semester, we're just using this definition to derive all kinds of things. As I said, this is a gold mine, okay? This is a gold mine. From this gold mine, we're gonna derive a lot. We're, we're far from done, we're far from done. There are lots of information can be digged out from that definition. But anyway, without further ado, until next time, thank you for watching.